Mitch coming in from not the Camera Score studio once again. So on a different mic, recording in a different room, different setup. And uh, yeah, if I sound any different, that's why. Regardless, on today's episode, we got a very exciting one for you. We're talking about the tiers for Dusk Morn. And yeah, we've got some really cool commanders, both in the set and in the pre-cons. Let's jump into it. We're just going to do this based off of however Moxfield you know, sets these commanders, which I guess is man of value. Norin Swift Survivalist. Okay, this one is a very cool commander. A 2-1 human coward for a single red mana. Can't block. Whenever a creature control becomes blocked, you may exile it. You may play that card from exile this turn. This one actually isn't as weak as you might think. I mean, not just because it's just a 2-1 that can't block, but essentially, again, being able to give you your creatures back in a way... Uh, I mean, I guess if they're going to get taken out in combat by exiling them, you kind of protect them. But also being able to play them again gives you whatever cast triggers, ETB triggers. Again, you're limited to mono red. It isn't the most powerful, but it's not the weakest. I'm going to throw Norin in the C tier. And I, again, probably should explain it really quick. The tiers, S tier is the best, D tier is the worst. And uh, this is all within the vacuum of Duskmorn and the Precon. So not compared to previous sets. Next up. Arabella Abandoned Doll. Yet another uncommon commander, but this one is spicy. A 1-3 ledger artifact creature doll for 2 mana in Boros. Whenever it attacks, it deals X damage to each opponent, and you gain X life for X the number of creatures you controlled power 2 or less. Now, this one I might be overrating, I will say, and I do reserve the ability to change these throughout the actual episode. I do reserve the, you know, I do reserve the ability to put this one, I was going to say something else, like, you know, like from the S tier. No, not the S tier. I'm in between B and A, to be honest with this one, because this is the type of commander where yeah, you can get a lot of creatures out quite quickly. I think I'm going to throw in the B, or in the A. Uh, I keep going back and forth on that. You can get creatures out quite quickly that are low power. I mean, just making a bunch of tokens, right? If you've got a token-based strategy, likely they are small creatures. So getting a lot of creatures out, whether it's secure the waste, whether it's enchantments in play, whether it's, you know, other ways to get creatures out, uh, populate effects. Uh, yeah, you've got a lot of ways to do so. You've got creature token doubling, that kind of stuff, too. Getting a lot of creatures out and then attacking with this equals an absurd amount of damage before you even get through in combat. Again, this is to every single opponent. Also, on top of that, again, this is the actual Arabella dealing up the damage. So if it has lifelink, you're gaining, again, three times that amount of life, number one, essentially, that you would just normally be gaining. And you just actually gain that life, too. And, of course, there's life gain synergies as well. Yeah, you got to throw your commander into danger. There are ways to get it through. There are ways to make it indestructible. You are in white. You have plenty of ways to make your entire team indestructible. Yeah, I think this one, again, actually does have some scary potential. As, I mean, not just with the art, but also with what it can do. It's also quick, low the ground. If you get set up properly, if you get some damage doublers, damage triplers as well, it's just going to be it's gonna be curtains for your opponents. And, and also, if you get Infect on this, it's going to be curtain for your opponents. So, yeah, it's a very interesting card. Next up, Marvin Murderous Mimic. A 2-2 Ledger Artifact Creature Toy for 2 mana. It has all activated abilities of all of creatures you control that don't have the same name as this creature. Now, if this commander was five colors, let's just say they slapped on at the end, like, you know, um, kind of like, I mean, Golos wasn't slapped on, but this is the ability, you know, pay five mana, you know, one of each color, essentially, and then it just says it gets plus plus one until end of turn. Literally, if that was just on this, not because of the actual ability itself, but because of giving it the extra, you know, colors, uh, all of them, this would be probably an S tier commander. That being said, because this is, <laughs> you know, in colorless, it is limited. So even though its ability itself uh, is actually probably better than, say, Arabella's because it is limited to just this, there are, there are a good amount of combos, I will say. There are a good amount of combos. That being said, there are only so many combos, at least from what I've seen so far. So let me know in the comments below if I'm missing a million combos. I know Pelly Pal, I know, you know, Palladium Mirror, all those kind of things as well. But it does require a decent amount of setup to get going because, again, of the limited number of combo creatures that you have. That being said, I mean, this deck is just going to try to combo. So that's basically what it's going to be doing. Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw in the B tier for now. I might change my mind on that one. But again, it is the type of commander that, like, 
in the 99 of a deck, it is better. Like, if you actually just see this in the 99 of a deck come into play, you need to kill it with fire because it is going to combo on you because, again, it has access to so many combos. So, as a colorless commander, it is more limited in that fashion. Next up, Nashi Searcher in the Dark, a 2-2 Rat Ninja Wizard with Menace for 2 mana in Demir. Whenever it deals combat to a player, you may mill that many cards. Not you may. You do mill that many cards. You may put any number of legendary and or enchantment cards from among them in your hand. If you put no cards in your hand this way, put a counter on Nashi. Now, this one, I will say, is probably toward... I mean, not at the bottom, but it's more towards the bottom than it is the top of the list. I'm going to throw this one in the C tier for now. Keeping Norn company. That's nice. Norn, Norn gets scared. Um, but yes, being able to essentially get this through. Again, Menace is not... I'd say it's on the weaker end of of evasion, I'd say, compared to some other things. I mean, like, I'd, I'd take flying over, over Menace, like, any day of the week. Especially when it comes to a, a, a card that's pretty weak itself. Again, starting off as a 2-2. Two, two, and not surviving, really. If your opponent's like, okay, I'll, I'll double block, and it's gone. Uh, but being able to, of course, increase the power of this one, you can obviously, you know, get extra benefits from it. I guess I should mention that with Arabella too, like extra combats. Yeah, you don't have extra combats with this one. You don't have extra hits with this one unless you give it like double strike with like a fire shrieker, etc. Being able to build around a bunch of legendaries. Yeah, there's a ton of legendaries you can build with. Um, yeah, it's again, it can give you once you get set up properly, once you get some power on this, probably some extra evasion on it to make sure it gets through. Yeah, you can get a good amount of cards off the top of your library into your hand. And again, like, if you whiff, you get one counter on this commander. Like, yeah, that's not all that great. So I'd say it's toward more toward the bottom than it is the top. Next up, the Jolly Balloon Man. Okay, now this one, if it didn't have one piece of text on it, like one little thing on it, it would probably be maybe S tier. Maybe. A 1-4 Human Clown with haste for 3 mana in Boros. If it didn't have that one right there, one then tap create a token copy it might scooch up a little bit and uh also if it didn't have the last part as well really quick one tap create a token that's a copy of another target creature control except say one one red balloon creature in addition to other colors and types as flying in haste sacrifice be an extend step activate only as a sorcery okay this thing if it again if it didn't have that little one right there that would combo with a ham sandwich because there are you know, more creatures than just Village Bellringer, like, you know, it comes to, like, untapping, that this would be, oh, yeah, that comes with that. Oh, that comes into play and untap something? Okay, that comes with that. It comes with that. It combos with that. All of these different things. Yeah, because of that little one that does save it a little bit, not being said, that being said, there are combos you can use with it. And also the active on sorcery also limits it a little bit as well. I'm actually kind of glad that this one is somewhat limited because, uh, again, the combos are just so obvious for it. That being said, uh, let's throw that in the A tier. That is incredibly powerful. Again, this is basically just like, okay, whatever ETB you want to use and abuse, use one mana to do so. And of course, yeah, there are ways to untap this. There are ways to untap this repeatedly. There are ways to untap this on your opponent's turns. Uh, but again, that doesn't matter because of the sorcery. So thank goodness for that limitation right there. But yes, being able to, again, get a Village Bell Ringer in play or whatever, which untaps all your creatures. And then all of a sudden, oh, by the way, I've got a Mana Dork. Oh, good for me. Cool. That untaps as well. I tap, again, I can probably generate infinite mana at a certain point. And uh, also just, yeah, swinging with an infinite number of Village Bell Ringers. You win! Or, you know, use Sundial the Infinite to keep things around too. But yeah, using and abusing ETBs, death triggers, etc. Very, very easy to do with this. Next up. The Master of Keys, 3-3 three, three, Flying Enchantment Creature for X and Esper Colors. When it enters, put X counters on it and mill twice X cards. Each enchantment card in your graveyard has escaped. The escape cost you with the card's mana cost, plus exile three other cards from your graveyard. This is a high value commander, I would say. It's one that isn't overly powerful. It is, again, that limitation like is... Probably needed. I mean, this is kind of like Moldrotha esque, but like whereas Moldrotha gives you like access to a limited number of things each turn, but like everything you have access to, this gives you access to everything of a limited thing, but you also have an extra cost. So, and yeah, sure, okay, it gets counters on it. Cool. I mean, like you can make this into easily a three shot KO. You are not necessarily, I mean, uh, you could ramp a decent amount, but it's not like you're going to be dumping most, for most decks built around this, like 18 mana into this and being like, or 18 plus 3, 21 mana into this and be like, okay, I swing at you with my 21, 21 commander and took you out. Maybe. I mean, cool, but you know, that's not the most powerful version of it. 
yeah, it gives you a good amount of value. I'd say it's more, I mean, it does give you good colors too. I do say it's more middle of the road, which might be kind of you know surprising when it's like, okay, comparing this to, again, Arabella, I do think Arabella is more threatening. But again, I could be wrong. This one, I'm sure there are also some like combos, but again, they are combos that are more limited with this one because again, you're escaping enchantments. And each time you're doing so, you're getting rid of three other cards in your graveyard. So there is a limit to that. Of course, there's ways to fill your graveyard like immediately as well, or like as much as you can. <laughs> but yes, being able to get your graveyard pretty full and then utilize this to its fullest, there are definitely some limitations to it. Uh, I'm going to go with a B tier for now. It's probably like a B plus, like A minus. Next up, the Mind Skinner. Now, this one's just all spice. Like this one is so cool, so fun. But I don't know how powerful it really is. A 10-1 Nightmare that costs 3 mana in blue. Can't be blocked. If a source you control will deal combo damage. Sorry, deal damage to an opponent. Prevent that damage and each opponent mills that many cards. I mean, it's cool. It's a really cool card. Like a 10-1 for 3 mana in blue. Who would have thought that you know this would ever exist? Not me. I, I love the design of this card. That being said, mill is only so strong. And you only have access to one color. I'm going to go with the C to your commander for right now. Like, yeah, cool. Okay. Again, you can mill 10 every single turn with this. And again, with other things, you can make it mill faster and that kind of stuff. But yeah, like, I don't know. There's just something about, again, like your opponents being like, oh, okay. Um, I have a shuffle Titan in my deck. Okay. Your deck just doesn't function until you like get rid of that because, oh, okay, cool. I shuffle my entire graveyard for free. All right, mill me again. All right, mill me again. Yeah, it's it's one where, again, like, yeah, milling someone for 10 times each turn is absurd in, you know, standard. Uh, when it comes to commander, yes, this one is milling all opponents, thank goodness. That being said, you are still going for a, you know, 100-card deck versus a 60-card deck. And also, again, in standard, there aren't necessarily, like, shuffle titans and stuff. So... <laughs> Being able to prevent yourself from being milled is something you can do in Commander. Not saying it's what every single deck is going to be doing, but like, uh, they're just like some, yeah, it's just more risky. It's a more risky strategy to try to go about this way and it not succeeding potentially. Okay, moving on. Toby Beastie Befriender, a 1 1 human wizard for 3 mana in white. When it enters, creating a 4 4 white beast creature token with this creature can't attack or block alone. As long as you control 4 more creature tokens, creature tokens you control are flying. Okay, so this one is quite spicy. I'm not sure exactly how good it is, but it is spicy. Yeah, I mean, I think this isn't this isn't the lowest of the low. I do not think that. I think that Toby is going to be joining our friendly mind. Um, oh goodness, the mind render, render mind Skinner. I was going to say mind render already a thing, uh, but yes, and the C tier e ETB make a four four. It does have a downside to it. Again, can't attack a block alone. Okay. There are plenty of ways to use and abuse the CTB in this. You are limited to mono white, which is still arguably, I mean, colorless is not a color, but, you know, still arguably the weakest color in Commander when it comes to, you know, having Commander building a deck around it, okay? Giving your creatures flying is huge. It's great. Again, it's great evasion. It does require a good amount of setup to get going, you know, just get out and then, you know, populate, get it out and blink again, 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 fill your army. And um, yeah, it, it's a very interesting Commander. Again, the mono white really limits it. Moving on. Tyvar the Pummeler. Okay, 3-3 three, three Alpha Warrior for 3 mana in green. Tap another untapped creature. Tap another untapped creature control against Indestructible until I've turned. Tap it. Pay 5 mana until the creature control plus X plus X until I've turned. X grace from creature control. This is a very interesting commander. It is one that, uh, yeah. Okay, and this is, again, where it's maybe a little unfair about, you know, again, sorry, Toby. And mono white versus, like, green, but green has it all in commander it really does green's like oh hey cool yeah okay i've got some decent tutors not as good as black but i've got some good tutors for certain things i'm the best ramp color by far i have uh i, I might be like the second best draw color actually too because like green for some reason just gets like hey draw based on creatures and it's like well that's not difficult at all or hey draw based on power and it's like oh my gosh yeah that's amazing for this obviously it's not hard to take advantage of the best things that you can do in Commander with green. So, I mean, you can very easily get out, like, cheap creatures that have a ton of power. Like, you know, say, like, uh, oh, goodness, I'm forgetting the name of the one. But, you know, like, the one that can cost, like, one last for each creature opponent's control. And it's a 10-10. Gives counters to all your other creatures. Please let me know in the comments below. Again, it's just slipping my mind this morning. 
That being said, um, yeah, you get a 10-10 out for one mana, and then you're like, okay, cool, I'll pump my creatures by 10. And as long as you have a way to, like, again, grant some, like, trample or whatever, and there's plenty of ones that do that, like, Aggressive Mammoth is both a giant creature and also one that gives you trample for all creatures, and it's cheap. Again, six mana for an 8-8 that does all that. Yeah, you can do some crazy things with this, and also there's certain creatures out there that can tap based on their power for mana, so you can just tap this and, I mean, make an absurd amount. And you can protect this commander, too. There's a lot going on for this. Maybe I'm overrating it comparatively because, again, I did say the you know, mono color, you know, weaker. Yes, okay, but green, green, it, I would rather have green in many ways than, like, some two-color combinations, potentially. So, I mean, maybe that's saying too much, but uh, I think it's probably... Okay, you know what? It, it's probably B tier. Let's go with B tier. Maybe I'm overselling it with that one, but it's like B plus, A minus kind of levels. Next up, Victor Valvagos Seneschal. A3 through Human Warlock for three mana in Orzhov. Eerie, whenever an enchantment you control enters, and whenever you fully unlock a room, surveil two of these first times abilities resolved this turn. Second time, each one discards that card. Third time, put a creature card from your graveyard on the battlefield under your control. Okay, this one I think is sneaky good. Like, it is, again... Uh, this is one of those commanders again i keep saying this with like the room thing like don't just like see something and like see like okay i have to build a room deck around this and there's not much that much support really overall for rooms so like it's gonna be pretty weak just ignore that part really if you, if you use some rooms cool if you don't that's fine too again enchantments this is basically you just pretend this is constellation essentially in a way yes yeah, surveil 2 is nice okay it is nice that is good card selection and of course, getting things in the graveyard really helps with that third part. The second time each one discards a card, that's actually pretty crucial and pretty brutal because that is a way to really lock opponents out of game, out of the game at a certain point. Like if you can like wipe the board, and by the way, you've got an absurd amount of board wipes in these colors, absurd amount of efficient board wipes. If you can wipe the board and then all of a sudden like take away your opponent's hands, they're going to be top decking trying to win. So this is a sneaky commander that like really can kind of go off with the right, it does take setup, but it can go off with the right setup. You also have a lot of blink effects. So like if you can get like, say like enchantment creatures in play and then blink them each turn, maybe not each, I mean, it, it's unrealistic to blink them every single turn, but like, again, you've got like Conjure's Closet kind of things you can blink on your turn repeatedly. And then on your opponent's turns, like a mass blink spell to get all three of those triggers essentially. Yeah, you can do some pretty brutal things with this. So I'd say this one is probably more middle of the road than people think, most likely. So I'm going to go with a B tier commander. Moving on. Zimone all questioning. Okay, this one's a bit weird. A 1-1 one -one human wizard for three mana in Simic at the beginning of your end step. If a land into the battlefield under control this turn, create uh, you create a prime. <laughs> sorry. And you control a prime number of lands. I was skipping around a little bit. Create primo the indivisible. There we go. A legendary 0-0. Zero -zero, green and blue fractal creature token. And then put that many counters on it. I was just too excited to say the name Primo, so I skipped over Prime Number. <laughs> Primo's a fun name for a, uh, you know, fractal that is based off of Prime Numbers. Okay, so basically, again, just like getting lands into play helps you. Okay, Simic. It's not card advantage, thank goodness, but again, obviously it can lead to card advantage because there's ways to like draw a card when like a creature comes into play or whatever, or, you know, based on the number of, or based on the number of counters or something, or, you know, gain based off of its power. Yeah, of course. Again, you're not going to be short on card draw with this commander. So, like, it doesn't matter that it doesn't actually give you card draw. This is not Tatio, but thank goodness. That being said, this is a commander where, again, you can just keep making slightly larger, slightly larger, slightly larger versions of that Primo. And if you are going for, like, mirror box, you know, kind of strategy, you can keep all the versions, which is quite nice, too. This commander can make some really big threats. Again, the threat itself does not have evasion, does not have trample. So do keep that in mind. Of course, there are plenty of ways to give that as well. This is a pretty well-rounded commander, I would say. It's it's very simple in what it does. But again, like it's pretty hard to stop because like your opponent's like, okay, I dealt with Primal. Thank goodness. Okay. Oh, goodness. That, that, that 11 power creature is gone now. All right. You play two more lands and all of a sudden you have it again. <laughs> 13 okay cool now i am at that again and again you can do that in one turn very easily or you literally can just like tap two creatures which bring lands and a play or whatever or play grow spiral which gives you initial land and instant speed you can just instant speed make a giant creature out of nowhere cool um and uh keep in mind all like death triggers that you can take advantage of with this too because it's legendary and like you can make another one yeah there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this one i mean ozolith is a crazy expensive card but very good at this too like losing all the counters but keeping them uh i'm gonna say this one's probably big b tier it does seem like around what all these other commanders are doing like making a big thing that's cool that can be powerful in the right situation you need other things around it to actually really make it work am not to veil piercer a two four human wizard for th four mana in esper at the beginning of your upkeep surveil two each enchantment card in your hand has miracle 
It's and uh, its miracle cost equal to its mana cost reduced by four. Okay, so this is the type of commander that like it is really really cool, and like newer players might not realize just like the power of miracle because. Yeah, okay, like, on your turn, absolutely cool. You draw your first card turn, and you're like, oh my goodness, okay, I got I got a miracle, basically, because it's an enchantment, so it costs four less. That's awesome. But really where the value out of this one is, is on your opponent's turns, because also it applies on your opponent's turns, too. So if you have, like, ways to just draw a card on your opponent's turns, congratulations. If you draw an enchantment, you can play that card. You skip timing costs, essentially, with that, again. You may cast a card for its miracle cost when you draw it, if it's the first card you drew this turn. So when you drew it, okay, you drew it then, you can play it. Even if it's, again, it's an enchantment that does not have flash or whatever, you can play it on opponent's turn. Which means that you are playing out of turn by also saving mana. Both things are huge. Those are huge things for you being able to do that. So yeah, I mean, that on your turn is nice because you get the surveil too, set yourself up, but also... If you've got certain cards out there like, um, oh gosh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say Future Sight. Your opponents will know what's coming then if it's Future Sight. But, you know, ones that let you look at the top card of your library essentially and not show your opponents. Yeah, you can do some pretty brutal things with this because, again, like, okay, yeah, I don't like that card. It's not an enchantment. Okay, I'll use them. I don't know my mill effects to mill myself. Essentially, like a ghoul caller's bell. Set yourself up. Oh, okay, now it is an enchantment. Awesome. All right. And then I know I'm going to draw this because I'm going to tap my Merfolk looter or whatever to draw. And then all of a sudden, I'm playing this giant enchantment for four less mana. I mean, yeah, you can get Omniscience out for six. Yeah, that's gross. That's absolutely gross. You can get Omniscience out for six on an opponent's turn. Not that you're going to do it on your opponent's turn, but yeah, you can do that. Overwhelming Splendor out of nowhere. Just some giant Haymaker enchantment bombs out of nowhere. So yeah, this is the type of community. Again, it's kind of like, it's a weird mix. I'm putting the A tier. It's a weird mix of like Vidalcan Ori-ish. I mean, specifically for enchantments and specifically for ones you draw that turn, but also like a giant amount of cost reduction. I mean, okay, what's that one like Hydra that gives like Hydra's like four less cost? Like this is a huge amount of cost reduction. And there's, of course, a lot of very powerful enchantments in these colors. Yeah, I'm going to say this one is an A tier commander because of all those reasons. Next up, Can Corrupt a Memory. This is a very cool commander and I love the design. A 2-2 illusion for four mana in Simic. Uh, if its power is even, you may cast non-creature spells of the light flash. If its power is odd, you may cast creature spells of the light flash. Whenever you draw a card, put a counter on again. Now, this is the type of commander that, like, is really interesting because, um, yeah, it, I, it's a really cool design. Like, it's Vidalcan Ori as a commander, which we just kind of talked about with Amnatu, but, like, in a very specific different way. This one literally is Vidalcan Ori as a commander, but, like, with a catch, with a condition. Again, like, you have to have the right amount of power to essentially play the cards that you want to play. That being said, it's incredibly easy to adjust that power, and it gives you on the card how to adjust that power, but of course there are other ways as well, uh, like Brushwag, not Brushwag, whatever the one is, uh, oh gosh, there's a creature where it's like pay green mana plus one plus one, that one. <laughs> being able to just adjust your commander's power on the fly quite easily allows you to play the cards you want to play when you want to play them. This is literally like a commander you can just get out and go pass. Okay, yeah, this, this commander's out, and then every single turn it's like draw pass, draw pass, draw pass, because you're going to play on your opponent's turns with this. On top of that, the amount of power this can get is a ton. Yeah, that's quite powerful. Now, is it above the power level of... Uh, I mean, it's not above the power ones we, that I just talked about with um, Aminatu. Is it above that B tier? It's, I mean, like, there's, I, I feel like with this set and the precons, there's a lot of really closeness. And I guess you can tell that right now by, like, I'm only in the A through Cs right now. I do believe that we will get to an S, and I do believe that we will get to a D tier commander. But it seems like with this with this set and the precons, like, things are really close. They're all very close. So, like, I think this one is probably, like, a B plus, A minus-ish. But I think I am going to throw it in the A tier because, like, just having the ability to play things whenever you want very easily and again it is easy to manipulate that is huge so yeah Valkanori in the command zone that's always gonna be a powerful thing and then also like again like okay I'm attacking with my commander literally if I've got a way to get it through or if you don't block I can wheel twice and then you lose I mean once you're set up you know if you draw enough cards but yeah being able to just wheel wheel and all of a sudden oh, I just drew all these cards cool all right all right you're gone yeah I just I hit you for a ton you're gone so yeah being able to just take people out of nowhere can be a thing as well Okay, Kona Rescue Beastie. A 4-3 Beast Survivor for 4 mana in green. Survival at the beginning of your second main phase. If it's tapped, you may put a permanent card from your hand on the battlefield. 
This is one of those commanders that has a high upside when it works and a large downside when it does not work. Because like this commander literally gives you nothing else except for you are literally just waiting for your second main phase and hoping it's still there. <laughs> because again, your opponents might like again, like the potential for this one is literally like, okay, let's just say turn one, you play um spring um uh, spring leaf drum. Turn two, you play like rampant growth. Turn three, you get this out. You also tap it, and then you drop down on your second main phase a Blight Seal Colossus. Congratulations. Yeah, you just turn three Blight Seal Colossus with this. You definitely can. That being said, if you don't have a way to tap it, you actually need to send it into combat, and uh, three toughness is not all that much. Of course, you got ways to pump it, ways to get it through potentially, but yes, you need to be able to make sure you can tap this. So have a certain amount of ways to tap it, okay? There are a decent amount in green, but like not as much as one we'll talk about later. That being said, again, like, this does absolutely nothing if you're just like, okay, I did all this setup. I, you know, I got all these things. Okay, it's tapped. It's ready to go. Okay, I go to combat. All right, you attack with whatever, you know, do whatever you're going to do. And then your opponent's like, okay, like, before your combat's over, um, I'm going to sort of supply shares your commander because it's tapped and I don't trust that you don't have a giant thing to just, like, sneak into play. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, again, like, the upside is huge. The downside is big. Uh, I mean, not big, but, like, it's got downside as well. It's, like, it is probably it, it's above you know it, it's kind of like a b minus like and this is the thing like tyvar is definitely above this one in my opinion and maybe tyvar needs to move up then because of that oh goodness do i do that but because like both again like they're both mono green which again is limited in that you're mono color but like it's not mono white so there you go <laughs> being able to oh uh, yeah i don't know i don't know okay i'm gonna move tyvar up and i'll make oh not to the s tier to an a tier and that will make me feel a little bit better about all this yeah, we're just going to stay with that for now, and maybe I will regret that. But yeah, I, I'll say Kona is a B tier middle of the road. Okay, Nico Light of Hope. 3 4 Human Wizard for 4 mana in Azorius. Enters, create 2 shard tokens, pay 2 tap, exile target, non ledger creature you control, shard you control becomes copies of until the beginning of the extend step, return to the battlefield, earns control to the beginning of the extend step. This one is spicy. When it comes to like how powerful it is, it really does require a lot of setup to actually make the most of it. It's kind of like brutaclad esque in a way where you can do some really cool things with it because you just make a bunch of shards. Again, you can like blink this to make more shards. You can populate to make more shards, etc., etc., and get them all to play. And then all of a sudden, you know, turn them all into a really, really powerful creature. One that maybe has some like really cool like trigger that, you know, if you've got more of them in play, the better. Yeah, you can do some really cool things. Again, limited not legendary. You also can like use and abuse its ETB too. Um, yeah, I think overall, like again, it is a very interesting design for a commander. This one requires more setup than most to be really good. I'm going to say this one is probably a B tier commander. Moving on, Rip Spawn Hunter. At the beginning of your second main phase, if it's tapped, reel the top X card your library, exit its power, put any number of creature and or vehicle cards with different powers from among them in your hand, put the rest of bomb your library in a random order. This is an interesting commander for sure. It really is. It's really cool. And again, like like Kona, again, it has its survival. It is completely dependent upon that. It is one that can generate you a lot of card advantage, potentially. It is one that, again, like if you throw vehicles in there, like if you're going the vehicle route, you're more limited like into like what your deck is going to be about and what it can do. But you're also giving yourself the option for like, okay, this is how I tap my commander. I have crew costs, essentially, right? So there is that kind of balance to it. That being said, obviously, if you just go like creatures, you've got access to more things than just being like all vehicles. So this is one where, again, it can generate you a ton, a ton, a ton of card advantage. There's a lot of ways to pump its power. Again, there's a ton of ways to pump its power. Like this compared to like Nashi, where like Nashi is like, okay, I'm dependent upon basically power and hitting someone. This one's just like, okay, I'm dependent on power. Also, Nashi's in Demir. I'm in Selesnia. You've got so many war ways to pump me. Yeah, this one can generate you a lot of card advantage, but it's just card advantage. And again, it's still dependent. Like Kona, it's not like a trigger that just happens right away. It's like, okay, I need to get this tapped. Like, I need to get this a lot of power, and I need to have it survive my, you know, up until my second main phase, essentially, to be able to get me all that. So I think overall, it's probably a middle-of-the-road B-tier commander. Again, its effect is, like, better in some ways, but worse in some ways than Kona's. Kona's, like, cheating something giant to play. This one's like, okay, I can get you, like, 10 things off the top of your library. The cheating one thing giant to play could just end the game. So there you go. Okay, moving on. Swarm Weaver. A 2-3 Ledger Artifact Creature Scarecrow for 4 mana in Golgari. When it enters, create 2 one, 1 black and green insect creature tokens with flying. As long as there are 4 more card types among cards in your graveyard, insects inspire you control, get plus 1 and have death touch. Okay, so like, 
delirium. It's not that hard to set up. Again, like if you are building around a commander like this to actually set it up. That being said, it can just go away in the blink of an eye because someone played a Bajuka Bog. <laughs> there you go. So like having a bunch of just insects in play might not be the most powerful thing. There's already more powerful spider commanders out there as well. Like, okay, I'm not, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to undersell this, I guess, because like this is an ETB that you can use and abuse, not as much. Again, if, if you were in Azorius colors, like you could obviously abuse it more often because of blink effects. You don't really have many blink effects in this color, like really at all, except for like Voyager Staff and like Conjurer's Closet. But you could use like Faint Death type effects to get this again and again and again and again to make a bunch of insects. I'd say you probably should pick between Insect and Spider Tribal and like pick one of the two and like really heavily lean into that one with this. And like plus one on death touch is nice, but it's not the most powerful thing in the world. I'd say overall, this one is probably, it's not a D tier. We'll get to why here in a little bit. It's a C tier commander. Next up, Valvagoth. We got Harrower, Harrower, <laughs> Harrower of Souls. A four for Elder Dima flying. Ward pay two life for four mana in Rakdos. Whenever opponent loses life for the first time during each of their turns, put a counter on Valvagoth, Harrower of Souls, and draw a card. Okay. Here's the thing. If this one wasn't as limited, this would be pretty absurd. And I'm glad it is limited in the way that it is because like it's the first time on each of their turns. So it's just each opponent on each turn. So basically if you do are set up properly, which takes very little setup, you could just have one card in play that like pings each player on their turn for one. Cool. You are drawing three extra cards and getting three counters on this commander, which is again, evasive with flying. You can make it into a three shot KO in no time at all, getting it to seven power two shot KO. And then also maybe you have double strike a one shot KO too. That being said, like, okay, this is a good draw engine for you once you set up properly. This is a, you know, potential win condition with Voltron ish, but like Voltron's not the most powerful thing and you can't really depend upon that always. I mean, I was going to say like with the ward, ward pay to life. Like you can't depend upon that because like you might not be able to like keep your commander around all the time. You need to protect it as well with other things too. I mean, overall, it's a solid commander. It's nothing special compared to like the commanders at the upper levels, though, I don't think. So I'm going to go with a B tier commander. Moving on. Winter, Cynical Opportunist, a 2-5 human warlock with death touch for four mana in Golgari. Whenever it attacks, mill three cards. Beginning of your end step, you may exile any number of cards from your graveyard with four or more counters, uh, more or card types among them. If you do, put a permanent card from among them on the battlefield, they finality counter on it. Okay, so as long as you have, again, Delirium, great, you're doing things. If you don't Delirium, this is doing not much. Again, like you usually don't want, like whenever whenever your commander says like, and attacks, do this. You usually don't want to send your commander into danger, typically. Like it does have Death Touch, so that could be a deterrent. Like if an opponent has a really good creature and you know they're not going to be willing to give it up, and that's like their only blocker, sure. But like you're sending a 2-5 at an opponent, and they're going to be like, okay, um... Yeah, I can just take the two easily, sure. But also, I um, I know that you need your commander in play to actually really get that effect. And um, yeah, I don't want you to be able to get giant thing out of your graveyard, which I can see right now into play. So um, find another way to mill is basically what I'm saying with this one again. If you have other ways to mill, once you're set up properly, yes, you can get things going. Again, it just takes like a bajuka bog to stop you though too. So like that's kind of all it takes really. Again, if someone just gets through your graveyard, you're kind of doing nothing with this commander really. So there is that kind of balance to it where it's pretty risky as well. Oh goodness. I mean like I don't know if it's as bad as like other C tier commanders, but it's like it's not as good as like the other B tiers. So like I am going to put it's like a C plus it's like a C plus B minus. I'm going to put it in the C tier because like I, maybe I'm underselling it, but like, yeah, it's, it's just not there. Next up, Winter Misanthropic Guide, a three, four human warlock with ward two for four mana in Jund. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws two cards. As long as there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard, each one's maximum hand size is equal to seven minus the number, number of those types. Okay. So this is a commander that is pretty brutal. Again, as long as there are four more card types, so again, Delirium, you do need Delirium, yes. But the benefit for this is literally each punt's maximum hand size is equal to seven minus the number of those card types. So if you have um, seven card types in your graveyard, your opponents don't have hands, which is gross, gross, absolutely gross. So that is a pretty just disgusting and disturbing thing where like you're like, okay, opponents, have no hands just don't don't do anything don't do anything at all all of a sudden you're like yeah no you know what you know you can't 
I'm just going to lock you out of the game. Now, that being said, you are giving your opponents, again, at the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws two cards. You are giving everyone two extra cards, right? At the beginning of your upkeep, everyone else draws two cards. That being said, again, if you've got like other discard effects as well, I mean, you can lock players out of the game. It is your upkeep. It's not your opponent. So like there's plenty of ways where like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, everyone discard two cards. <laughs> okay, you're all out of cards. Yeah, and again, this is something that again is not like that delirium thing that is not I mean, it's not applying to every single player, right? It applies to your opponents, not to you. So at a certain point, you could very easily lock your opponents out of the game. This has Ward 2 as well, which is a nice little protection, not a ton, right? But like a little bit of protection as well. If you can keep this in play, your opponents, and you get set up properly, your opponents are going to be top decking. If you are brutally building this to like make it so that like it's the most powerful thing that you can, and your opponents literally don't have any cards left, you can just make it so they're all top decking everything and you are getting two extra cards each turn and the cards that they get don't matter because uh, unless they're drawing instant speed removal and you probably have other ways to protect your commander to ensure that it's not going away, that they are just praying they get something off the top of the library. When they don't, they basically just lose because you have locked them out of the game. This, I do think, is actually like kind of A plus like S tier commander because, again, with the most powerful version built around it, once you have Delirium, you probably just win. Again, if you build it so that you have like other things that like force discard, like making players discard their entire hands and then like making it so they have no hand size. Yeah, abs. I mean, no hand size, have zero hand size. There you go. No hand size would be much, much nicer. I do think this is quite brutal. Maybe I'm overselling it, but I do think that this one, again, just like the potential, like the high end potential, of this one is absurd. So yeah, I think I'm going to throw this in the S tier. It's probably like A plus S. There's not really, I don't think like a standout standout in this. There's not like one that's like, oh my gosh, there's the Urza. But like this one is quite powerful and I'd be very scared of it on the other side of the table. Next up, Zimone Mystery and Raveler. A 3-3 Human Wizard for four mana in Simic. Whenever a land you control enters, manifest dread. If it's the first time civilian resolve this turn, otherwise you may put a permanent you control face up. So basically, um, <laughs> this is... Again, landfall is easy to use and abuse in this. And whereas others of Mon was like, okay, I'm making giant creatures. This one's like, I'm cheating things into play very easily. And you can literally just, uh, again, let's just pretend, okay, turn three, you get this down. I mean, you can probably do even quicker. Obviously, you're in Simic. So I like, turn four, okay, I play an Evolving Wilds. I crack it, and all of a sudden, I get Blight Seal Colossus off the top of my library and play. Uh, I mean... Again, the Conan are doing the same thing, but like you're more limited. Like this, like you can just do right away with like the landfall. I mean, manifest red, and then all of a sudden flip it. Yeah, that that's pretty crazy. Uh, you can also easily get manifest red in your opponent's turns as well, and flip things too. Again, with like evolving wilds, you know, in speed ramp spells as well. Being able to just cheat giant things up up the top of your library is huge, and you very easily can set the top of your library. You have like worldly tutor things like that that can put a creature from your library on top of your library, and all of a sudden you just know what exactly what it is. You flip it, and then all of a sudden, cool. All right. You also have access to blink effects, so like you don't even need that second part really. You could use like ghostly flicker to blink two of your face down creatures, and they turn face up essentially, and then they are whatever they are. So again, if it's like you know again omniscience, you can just cheat and play omniscience. You can cheat and play some massive things very easily, very quickly. I'm going to say this one is in A tier commander. Very solid. Next up. Now, apologies. The translated version is not in Moxfield for this one yet, but basically ETB, um, basically ETB reveal top seven and hey, you get all the enchantments and then also you put the rest of them on your library and then the tap ability is like, you know, unlock a room basically or relock a room. So when it comes to like room tribal, yeah, that that's not really like going to be the most powerful thing in the world, uh, to be honest. Like th that's just like the more powerful version of this is like, sure, if you have really, really good room cards, use them. But if not, don't just like limit yourself to that, like focus more so just on, hey, that's a pretty powerful ETB to be able to get you a lot of enchantments off the top of your library. So this is just like enchantress with like a lot of value to be had. Of course, use and abuse blink effects to get that ETB again, again and again. I'd say this one, again, you have all five colors. So again, like Enchantress, five color, again, get a ton of enchantments off the top of your library into your hand every single time you blink this. Uh, and also if you've got other constellation effects, essentially other eerie effects as well, and you've got, and you go into that blink theme quite a bit and you can blink everything and then they come back and then all of a sudden like, oh, okay, all my constellations trigger. Yeah, you can do a lot of crazy things. I had a lot of blossoms drawing a ton of cards. Yeah, it's just basically Enchantress 5 color with a solid ETB. And sure, if you've got some rooms in there, take advantage of that tap ability. A tier commander. Next up, 
Renmaw, Creaking Nest, a 5-5. Five, five. For Scarecrow with Menace and Reach for 5 mana in Golgari. Uh, when it enters and whenever you play a card with 2 or more card types, each player creates a tap 2-2. Two, two. Blackbird, Kuchon with Flying. The tokens are goaded for the rest of the game. This thing is spicy. Like, it's just really fun. <laughs> I mean, I... It is a decent, again, a good ETB, right? A good ETB. And I do think that, again, like, if you were in Azorius, obviously you could more easily use and abuse that. That being said, since you're not, I mean, you can very easily use and abuse, like, playing two or more card types. Like, just play a bunch of artifact creatures, have a good amount of, like, cost reduction for that as well, and maybe have some ways to get them back out into play. And all of a sudden, yeah, like, you just keep playing them, you know, get them out of your graveyard, back in your hand, play them again, that kind of stuff. You can get a lot. Just make a massive army of birds and everyone's got to attack each other. <laughs> so you're probably the last one standing against someone else. And then, yeah, you'll have ways to win as well. So it's a really cool commander. It's not the most powerful. It is pretty powerful, though. Uh, I'm going to go with a B-tier commander. It's just, it's just all kinds of spice. I love the concept of a scarecrow commander like that. Next up, the Lord of Pain. I love this design. A 5-5 five, five, human assassin with menace. Your opponents can't gain life for 5 mana and Rakdos. Whenever a player casts their first spell each turn, choose another target player. The Lord of Pain deals damage you left. Spells mana value to the chosen player. This one is cool. This one is spicy. This one is quite powerful. Again, it's anyone's first spell during any turn. So, again, if someone plays an instant speed spell on someone else's turn or flash spell, whatever it is, you're taking advantage of that too. And of course, you can give this thing lifelink, give this thing infect to make it hit even better for you. Again, gaining life or taking your puns out quicker. And making so your puns can't gain life is huge. Like, just like the, the end is coming, okay? Like, group slug type strategy with this one. Everyone casting spells have damage levels, damage triplers. It costs a decent amount to get out, but like, once it's out, it's going to be doing some stuff for you. Um, I mean, ee, maybe I'm overselling this one. And again, like, like I said, at the very end of the game, like, it does have a downside to it where, again, if an opponent casts their first spell, and then you have to choose another target player, which would be you. So keep that in mind. That being said, of course, you can negate that damage if it has lifelink. So there you go. Yeah, be careful. It does infect, though. Uh, but yes, I do think that it is one where it's got potential. It does require some setup. Uh, am I overselling it? It's like it's like B plus, A minus. It's like B plus, A minus. It's right there. I'm going to throw in the A, I think, just because I really like it. I just I really like the commander. Maybe it's not quite an A tier commander. But again, I do think things are really close in this set. Not speaking of which, <laughs> we've got the Wandering Rescuer. Now, maybe I'm underselling this. It's a 3-4 flash human samurai noble for 5 mana in mono white. And again, mono white is technically the weakest except for colors. Convoke. Now, although colorless maybe has some advantages over mono white too. <laughs> that being said, convoke. So your creatures can help cast it. Double strike. Other creatures, other tapped creatures can help tax proof. This is to me like a not necessarily, it's not, a, it's not, built for a commander and again i do this evaluation like and i understand that there are certain you know ledger creatures that are not made for a commander i do understand that okay i do that being said this is as a commander just okay you've got a three four with double strike that sometimes gives hex proof to your creatures yeah that's not really something that's all that impactful in commander compared to literally anything else it does not just give you value at all right away yes if you pump it you can hit hard with it if you get through with it, but it doesn't have any evasion either. So I, it is just a D tier commander. Next up, joining in the D tier. <laughs> a little spoiler right there. Atlanac the Thrice Called. I mean, there's like some cool interactions with this, like in other formats, because like you've got that one card that can like bring it out uh, essentially, and but you can't really do that commander because you can't have multiple copies of the card. A 9 9 Insect Beast to trample for seven mana in green. Whenever it becomes a target of a spell or ability, punk controls, draw a card, pay two mana, discard it, or turn target land card from your grave with a battlefield tap. Now, Again, as your commander, you're never really going to be using that at all. Like, maybe you build some weird deck around this, which you might, where you're like, okay, I get out of play. I bounce this back to my hand, which is not all that easy in green. And then I just keep discarding it and bring it back to my hand for some reason, just to bring lands from my graveyard back to the battlefield tapped. I don't recommend building that way. It's pretty spicy. Uh, but other than this, is just a 9-9 Trampler for 7 mana. And uh, sure, it might draw you some cards if opponents like target it, but if they don't, you're not drawing cards off of it. Overall, pretty weak. Pretty weak. Okay, finally, Valvagoth Terror Eater. A 9-9 Elder Demon for 9 mana. Flying Lifelink Ward. Sacrifice 3 non-land permanents. That actually is a very steep ward cost right there. If you didn't, if a card you didn't control would be put in a grave from anywhere, exile it instead. During your turn, you may play cards, exile with Valvagoth. If you cast a spell away, pay life, it mana value rather than pay its mana cost. This is one where, like, it is incredibly powerful. And again, like, it is kind of like Turgrid-esque, but not quite. It, not quite. 
because again, Turgid costs five and also has a combo on the back of it. Uh, but yeah, this one is very, and also gives you the things for free. This one, you do have to pay in life to steal the things essentially. It is counting anything, go, going to the grave from anywhere. So again, like you force them to discard, you make them you know, sacrifice things in play, you mill them, whatever it is, you get all of those things. That being said, this does cost nine mana, which is a ton. So once you're in play, yeah, you can dominate the game, but you need to get in play. So I'm going to say this one's a B tier commander. It's very solid, but again, it costs a truckload to get out. Once you get it out, yeah, a 9-9 flying lifelink. That's quite nice. So you can actually, and it's got some good protection too. You can gain some of that life that you're going to gain. Also, there's situations where like, I want my life total to go down because I'm going to swap life totals and then I win with that. So you can do some cool things with it. But again, it takes a lot of setup just because literally your commander costs nine and nine is a ton. And if it's not a I win the game right away ability, essentially like that, like it is probably not going to be any higher than a B tier commander. Regardless, I do think I feel pretty decent about these tiers. Again, like we're pretty heavy in the middle. But again, like I said with this, hey, Duskworn is kind of just a, a set where... It seems like a lot of things, like a lot of these commanders are more toward the middle. Like there just, there aren't any like standouts on the top. There's not, I mean, there's two standouts on the bottom, I guess, but like from C to A, and C to S really, like everything is pretty much closer, I'd say, than some other sets where you just have like an obvious like, oh yeah, uh, Stella Lee, you're at the top because you're broken. Like there's nothing in this set that's really like all that broken. And again, maybe I'm overselling like Winter, compared to some other ones and maybe there's another one that should be up there instead essentially but like i do think things are fairly close in this set so let me know what your thoughts are on all this in the comments below where am i right where am i wrong be gentle please constructive criticism please and of course as always thanks again and have a good one this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you if you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.